into the kitchen. Now, we normally don't think of pot pie as a spring and summer dish, do we? It's usually no, a winter, winter dish. It's pretty cozy. Ah, uh -huh, <laughs> but not today. Today, I'm using delicious spring vegetables that you will want to take all the way into summer with these pot pies, by the way, so you guys dig in. Oh, and it yes. was inspired by this weekend's Hallmark original movie, Easter Under Wraps, which takes place in a chocolate factory. So I'm adding a secret ingredient in here, and I bet you can guess what it is. <gasps> It's not chocolate. chocolate. It's chocolate. Get chocolate out. Chocolate in the pot what? pie? Yes, it's chocolate in pot pie. But you'll see it's just, it's, it's a taste that you keep thinking like, hmm, what is that taste? And it wow. adds a sort of depth of flavor, but it's not overwhelming. It's really yeah, good. Man. I like it. So then you can tell your kids that they're eating chocolate for dinner. Joining Cam at the counter is Ken and Orly, obviously, Already and they starting. have dug in. So, <laughs> as you all know, Fiona Gubelman was here yesterday, who stars in the movie alongside Brendan Penny, who is Cameron's good friend and always keeps us laughing. So Fiona's character, Aaron, goes undercover at her family's chocolate factory to find out why sales are down. And while she's there, she meets the head chocolatier, played by Brendan. His name is Brian. Together, they decide to bring back the legendary Cavendish egg as a way to boost sales and maybe, just maybe, in the midst of all that delicious chocolate, they'll also find some love. Oh. So working in the chocolate factory, by the way, sounds like it would be fun, right? Like, right. like Willy Wonka. Right. Well, not so much. Take a look. <laughs> Why don't you pick up the pace just a little? It's moving so fast, it's stressful. You know what I like to say? Just go with the flow. Thanks, I'm trying. What are you wearing on your feet? Aren't they cute? Honey, those are not sensible work shoes. Oh, thank goodness. It has been such a long day and I am exhausted. <laughs> Girl, you're funny, that's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Not a walk in the park for Aaron, no. That's, but it's kind of like Undercover Boss. I love the premise yeah, of this movie, yeah. right? It's so great. All right, so I thought, inspired by this movie, why not put some chocolate in some pot pies? Because I love pot pies, I love chocolate, and that way Alexandra will think that she's having dessert for dinner. I like her right? style. Why not? I, I, I know like you'd it. like this as well, or at least it's very easy to do this. Uh, you can make your own puff pastry for the lids, but why bother? There's so much great puff pastry at the grocery stores now, and p making puff pastry is wonderful, and it's delicious, but it's equally as delicious in the aisles of your grocery store. So that's very easy. <laughs> get, I'm, I'm not kidding. A lot it easier. It takes no, a lot of work. Sure. So get your favorite puff pastry, and you're going to want to, they come in little sheets like this usually. You're going to want to find a lid that is a little bit bigger, not a lid, excuse me, a, um, a little saucer like this that's a little bit bigger than your ramekin. Because when you cook your puff pastry, when you bake it, it's going to shrink. So you want to have something that fits over, you see, so okay. it doesn't okay. fall in. If it okay. falls in, it's not that big of a deal. It's really just aesthetic. So what you do is you put that on your puff pastry. You take a paring knife, and you just go around just like this, very easy. It's like you're cutting out a circle, just like that. I didn't know puff pastry shrinks. That's so cool. Yeah. Look and it. it also puffs. And it pops and shrinks at the same time. It's like a double wave. <laughs> so we pop this in the oven at 10 to 12 minutes at 350. And while we do that and our lids bake, I'm going to show you how to make the filling. Very simple. Again, it's, it's a typical pot pie. So you're going to put in some onions and some carrots and some olive oil until the onions become translucent, which is going to be about six or seven minutes. Then to that, we're going to add, oh, that smells good. We're going to add some zucchini. But again, whatever you have in your refrigerator that's about to, you don't want it to get mushy and bad. Just right. pop it in a pot pie. Some snap peas, which I absolutely love. It gives a little bit of a crunch. I love snap peas. Some broccoli or some broccolini, whatever you have. Then we're going to saute that just a little bit, just to soften it up a tiny bit. After that softens a few minutes, like three or four minutes, we're going to add our milk and some chicken broth, very simply. And we're going to let that simmer for a few minutes. Again, about four minutes. There we go. You really want all that to come really together. good, Debbie. Yeah. It can, I know. And do you I don't taste the chocolate? I don't. I, but you taste something you can't quite figure yeah, out what it is. is. Well, I'm I keep thinking it's lemon right. or something. It yes. seems like it's lemon. Okay, well, there's lemon in there as well. Okay. We'll okay. get to that. Okay. We're going to get to okay. that. Yeah, okay. okay. So this simmers a little bit. Then after this simmers, this is where the secret ingredient comes in. This is where we drop in the white chocolate chips. So you can add as much or as little as you want. I just wanted a tiny hint. I didn't want it to be too overwhelming. So we drop in the chocolate chips and we let those melt. 
Then after those melt, we're gonna add back in our chicken. If you have a leftover rotisserie chicken in your refrigerator, because there's always a tiny little bit left and you really don't you can't know. Can't serve it for a meal, what do you do? What do you do with it? Yeah. That's where you can debone it right. and throw it in here and that would be great. If you don't want to, you can brown your uh, any sort of chicken, breast, uh, thighs, brown that and then drop it in. So after this is simmered and the white chocolate chips have melted, then we drop back in our rotisserie chicken, some sprigs of thyme, and we let that simmer a little bit longer, and then we drop in a slurry. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of liquid here, and you don't want it to be like a soup. So the slurry is gonna help thicken it up, which is just chicken stock, again, chicken broth, and some uh, cornstarch, that's it, just like that. Wow. Drop that in, and that will start to thicken up the filling in about four minutes. That's great, because I always have a problem with getting my filling it's to thicken. Exactly, because then it starts to become soupy, and right. it, it, nobody wants a soupy pot pie. Well, so it's just cornstarch and... Will evaporate? It will, yeah, though? look it. That's what's going to be. Okay. In four wow. minutes, if this was on higher, and we had it going, in four minutes, it would become this. Okay. So that's like a proper... Filling yeah, of a top perfect. pie, right? Okay, so now we're gonna drop in the lemon because Such I want a huge difference. Yeah, it makes it taste different. so light and yeah. bright. And very springy and summery, yes. right? So I'm obsessed. A, a little bit of lemon juice, some lemon zest. Now Come as on. as much or as little as you want. I like it quite lemony it, because of yeah. that, Ken. It makes it feel really light. And then some dill and some chives right at the end, because again, that counteracts the chocolate. And then some chives right there. You know what? I bet you could do this with dark chocolate too. I haven't tried the dark chocolate just because I thought the white chocolate would be nice. But yes, the bitterness of the dark chicken chocolate and would work. Chocolate, and mole, and things like that. Exactly. Not, they go together. They so. go together. That's right. Like, like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> chicken and chocolate. Like, <laughs> chicken and chocolate in my new restaurant. My autobiography, Chicken and Chocolate. Look out for it. Stores near you. All right. So now we take our little ramekin. We fill it up with our filling, just like that. It's delicious. And by the way, if you don't want to use the puff pastry, you don't have to use the puff pastry. I sort of just like the filling as it is. It's, I mean, it's so tasty. It's so good, right. Debbie. And put our little lid on top from our puff pastry. Oh, so and adorable. You it. Now so you get to dig in. Too, Deb. So I get to break have a bite, everybody.